Well, good morning once again, and welcome to Goodrich United Methodist Church. As you can see, I am not Pastor Joel, uh, nor am I doing nearly as well a job, but I understand what he talks about when he says, you know, there's going to be little hiccups and screw-ups and that sort of thing, and you just try to roll with them as best you can. So, as I was told with a tie on, perhaps you will not recognize who I am. Uh, so that being said, so Pastor Joel is out once again uh, with COVID. Uh, like I say, I talked to him this morning. He sounds like he's great in good spirits. He just wants everyone to know that uh, he's doing very well, but it's protocol. So that's the reason why he's not here today is due to the fact that there is a 10-day protocol uh, from the last time that the uh, person tests positive. So that is why he is not here, but he's doing well. So our thoughts and prayers go out to the Walters family. Uh, get well soon, and we will definitely uh, look forward to having you back next Sunday. So... I was called on Wednesday uh, to lead service, and once again I thought, okay, what's, what's going on here? And he, of course he told me about uh, you know, the protocol or whatnot. Normally I uh, require much more time, like probably about a year in advance before I would like to get up there. Uh, but he reminded me that, hey, this is the giving service. You know, it's, it's that giving sermon series, and, and then it dawned on me, oh, so due to budget, we already had Pastor Heist, so therefore our budget is down for those for filling pastors, so uh, by all means, that's why I'm here. So, but the good news, this promises to be one of my top 10 best sermons. Okay, once again, it's only number eight, but still, it promises to be a top 10. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Roger Gill. Usually I like to sit in the back and uh, uh, more or less like say just, uh, yeah, look at Pastor Joel and think, hey, you're doing a grand, uh, fantastic job. Uh, now, when I was, when I graduated uh, high school at the age of 17, I was lost. I had no clear direction. I didn't know who I was or who I wanted to be. I had no focus, and I had no goals. I was more or less dead inside. When a Marine recruiter come knocking on my door, I jumped at the opportunity, and I joined the Marine Corps in 1989, and everything changed. As a young 18-year-old teen, I was sent over to Okinawa, Japan. They call that the rock. It's a little island off of Japan. Obviously, it's much like our Hawaii is to us, where they're Okinawans. They're not Japanese. But there, I would find a new love, a new focus, and a new family. It would be my Marine brothers. Now, these would be the brothers to me that I never had growing up. And the love that we had for one another, I would be willing to die for them as they would be willing to die for me. It was that kind of love that we shared for one another. If one of us was ever get in trouble, right, wrong, or otherwise, we had each other's back, and we were always ready to go. Now I could tell you, if one of us was about ready to get in a fight, you were going to fight us all. That's the way it was. I won't tell you how many of us it was going to take, but I could tell you how many of us we were going to use. Now, as you see, we were a band of brothers, and we had each other's backs, no matter what the cost. Now, I know my fellow veterans here can protest this, brothers and sisters, that they, they realize exactly what I'm talking about. It's that bond. Perhaps it's the same kind of bond between mother and child, or the type that we have as parents towards our kids, that we will let no harm come to them. Now, a lot has changed since then. I'm not nearly as mean nor as lean. <laughs> and I was even told by one of our church members, wow, you really have evolved since you started coming to church here. I'm not going to tell you who she is, Linda Campo. But uh, she had mentioned me, and I said, so, Linda, so you're saying I'm getting soft. <laughs> but she's an outstanding woman, and I absolutely love her to death. And, uh, boy, she runs this place like a Marine Corps drill instructor, doesn't she? Do you ever see anyone smiling? No, but we love her. No, she's great, but, wow, that was, that was impressive. That was very impressive. So, Linda, thank you for that. Uh, but the one thing that has not changed, at least for me, is my willingness to die for those I love. You all are my family, and I love each and every one of you, and I would not mind laying down my life for any one of you. Yes, I would lay down my life for you and what I believe in. That's the type of person I am. And yes, I even love my voice to her sisters. I'm sure the ones that will be talking to me about this after this is all over with, about what I did wrong and how I need to uh, do a better job. But I still love them. So the one thing I want you to do, now it's easy for us to say I love you, right? Simple, we say it all the time. But do we really mean it? Now, I want you to try this the next time you're talking on the phone to whoever it might be. Maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a telemarketer, or even your boss. So as you're going along in your conversation, I want you to slip in at the end. 
okay, I love you. And you'd be surprised how many times they'll stumble and say it back, oh, I love you too. And then they catch themselves. Now in John 13, 34, Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. He's commanding us. It's not I want you to do this. I'm commanding you to love one another. And if we truly love one another, then we will truly know what it means. But I believe Jesus is talking about compassion. In verse 1 John 3.16, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. It's compassion. It's what makes us move. Compassion. We see this in the story of the Good Samaritan. The righteous ones, they simply pass right by. But the Good Samaritan felt that pain. I can't walk by and see this. This man dying, bleeding, naked on the side of the road. I have to do something about it. It was compassion. He felt that so impelled in the love that he had for him that he had to stop and render help. And at the end, he paid all the bills and he said, if there's any more bills, let me know and I'll pay them too. Compassion. Compassion, it's that love down deep that we all have of seeing someone that needs our help. It's why police take that oath to protect and serve. It's why firefighters run into that burning building. That house is certainly not the pay. I know that as a veteran. It's not the pay. It's the joy that we feel and the help that we provide for those in need. Now in 1 John 317, Jesus says, If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Now this verse here makes me think of the passage in Matthew 19 of the rich man and the kingdom of God, where the man asked Jesus, What good things must I do to inherit the kingdom of life? And Jesus replied, if you want to enter life, then keep my commandments. And of course, they talk about the commandments. And then the young man says, well, I've kept all these, so what do I still lack? And Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give them to the poor, and you will have your treasure in heaven, and then come follow me. Now, it would have been easy for the man to simply just give his possessions away, right? But the thing is, he could have asked for them back. This way, Jesus was telling him, I want you to sell everything and then give that money to the poor so he would have no chance of getting them back and then follow me. Now, when the young man heard this, of course, he was sad and he went away because he had great wealth. Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you, that man did not have great wealth but great wealth had him. For we cannot serve two masters, for you will love the one and you will hate the other. Now, while driving around town, especially in some of our cities, you always see the cardboard sign and the person holding it on the corner. Homeless and hungry. Please help. God bless. So what do you do? Do you give help? Or do you simply just look the other way? Maybe even some of us mutter under our breath. Hey, get a job, bum. All kinds of help wanted signs. We don't know their circumstance, but do we help? For Matthew 25, 35 says, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. It's compassion. It's that feeling that makes us move to give to those in need. Matthew 25, 40. The king replied, Truly I tell you, whatever you have done for the least of these brothers and sisters, you have done for me. You ever stop and think, Is that person Jesus in disguise? the one in need, would we say no to him? Now Jesus says in 1 John 
Dear children, let us not love with our words or our speech, but with actions and in truth. Now we cannot just say I love you without showing it. It's meaningless. That said, we are saved by grace and not by our works. We don't serve those in need in order to be saved, but rather because we are saved. Now actions and truth go hand in hand. What we believe is shown by what we do. Now Jesus, I'm sorry, now Matthew 16, 24, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. So where would we be without love from others, true love and compassion? Now that verse right there makes me think of the disciples. Jesus told the disciples, what you're going to do is not going to be easy. You will be persecuted. You will be ridiculed. And you will probably be killed because of who I am and in my name. They did it anyway. These men had such great compassion for the people of the world and for us that no matter what, and their willingness to die for us to get the message of God out was so strong, that's exactly what they did. They laid their lives on the line, and most of them ended up dying in one of the most gruesomest ways to get us the word. And we need to go out there and do the same for those. We need to be willing to lay our lives on the line to get God's word out to the people that need to hear it the most. And by this, everyone will know that we are Jesus' disciples and that we love one another. God loves you, and so do I. Amen.